So welcome to Berlin, Germany. We are now today at Gemal de Galerie. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And today we'll be seeing uh, one work here of Rembrandt and then we'll go on to another museum to see another work of Rembrandt. And just as we do go through the presentation, just see it as a story. Okay, this is one of the points that I love about Rembrandt. He captures a moment in time and tells a story through his painting. So the first painting we will look at is the Mennonite preacher Cornelius Anslow and his wife. Now, as we, can, as we know from past uh, classes, most portraits are done with the both couples, if it's a double portrait, with them just standing still. Or if we see a portrait with two people, uh, they have all the instruments of something, let's say, for the humanities uh, in, the, in the painting, and it tells a story. And I love this painting because the preacher is in motion. The preacher is doing what he loves, to preach. And this is the first point. Cornelius Anslow was actually a wealthy merchant. He was a businessman by trade, but he was also a famous preacher. And he chooses and he pays Rembrandt to paint a painting of him of doing what he loves most to preach and what he's known for. And now as a preacher, you could have chosen, okay, we can, you can do a painting of me in my ambo preaching to the crowd. But he says, no, I want a painting done in my home because it shows that even though I preach in church, I also preach in my house. So who is he preaching to? As the painting's title says, he's preaching to his wife. He has the book open because for Mennonites, they had a strong emphasis on, on the word. If you don't know what Mennonite is, the religion, it's like a branch off of Christi uh, Christianity. So it's not Catholicism, obviously, it's post-Reformation, but it's a break off. And they emphasize again the word. They wanted to move away from the painting, from all the images, just like we saw that the churches were bare. And for him, the emphasis is on the word. And that's why we see the scripture open here on the side. The Bible is open. He's preaching to his wife. And again, in most paintings, we'll see an even, even amount of lightning, lighting around the painting. And yet Rembrandt brings us into this focus, right? We see the preacher here, and we see a strong light on his wife. And you can see that maybe one of the things he's trying to portray is that the word is inspiring her. It's moving to her. And the last thing I want to portray in this painting is his hand. His hand is the center of the painting. His hand is an invitation to his wife, but also to the people that, uh, that is looking at the painting. You could even call this a foreshortening. His hand is almost extending to us, right? And I want you to pay attention to the hand in the next painting as well. So for the next painting, we'll actually move on to the Rex Museum in Amsterdam. And here we call, is what we call the Night Watch Gallery. And I put the image of the gallery because I want to focus for a second on a painting that's actually flanking the Night Watch by Rembrandt. So you walk into this gallery and we're going to focus on this painting over here for a second. This painting is called The Meager Company by Franz Halls. I, paint, I show this because it gives us a context of what we're going to talk about for the Night Watch. If you see, it's a group of militia, it's a militia company. There's an evening, um, even amount of lighting, again, as we noted before. And all the men are posing. These men all paid money to be in this painting. And obviously, they pose in a position that's going to show their eloquence, their manliness, their virility. They're dressed in the best clothing they can find. You can see the captain is obviously here in the middle. He's the leader, and they're all, again, all posing, right? And let's go on to the night watch. The night watch is completely different. We see the lighting is not even. Not everyone has the same amount of attention. Our attention is obviously drawn to the middle, which would be the captain and his lieutenant. And the other aspect that I love, again, is the story it tells. This painting is not one just capturing men in the best poses they can have. No. We have men fitting up their rifle to shoot. We have a guy here blowing out the ashes from his gun. We have this man that's beating his drum. We have this captain that's leading the charge out. It's not a painting just in a moment with them posing. No, it's, it's in motion. There's men's spears. I mean, this is a total army moving out. This man over here holding up the banner for the company. 
And if you haven't seen it yet or noticed, there's this strange girl right here in the middle of the painting. And it's just a, one of the mysteries actually that a lot of experts have questioned about. And the consensus is, is that Rembrandt painted that in as the mascot uh, for this militia company. Because you can't maybe see it here very clearly, but she actually has a chicken around her waist with the claws still in. And these claws were a symbol for the name of the company, which is escaping me right now, but it, it rep the claws represent the name of the company. So she is put in as a mascot. And just a, the final note, well, two notes. Um, they call this the Night Watch, but that wasn't the original name. The original name, as you can see here, is Militia Company of District 2 under the command of Captain Franz. It's a long name, and that's actually the common name that was used in the painting before. I, I put also the name that it's known for, but it actually had a, a name similar to this, Militia Company under District 3, etc. And the last thing is they call this the Night Watch, but this setting was actually, wasn't actually at night. It was actually painted, shown to be in daylight. But because of time, there was a thick um, layer that developed over the, the, the top of the painting. As you can see here at the bottom, it is obviously daylight. But again, they call this the night watch after some time. So again, I hope you enjoyed these, this, these two paintings. Uh, hopefully you can see more into Rembrandt and the story that he wants to portray in every painting that he does. Thank you.